Okay, so I've got that little back bulkhead in there that blocks to where the battery goes and uh, the wiring and all in place. And I did the same process. I just made me a, a little uh, stick jig and then cut a, uh, a, a cheap, uh, some um, eighth inch plywood scrap kind of thing to make a pattern. And then, and then cut that. that. That's actually a half inch uh, teak, teak veneer marine plywood there that I had on hand. I had a piece just barely big enough to cut that out of. And uh, I still had had the uh, uh, switch panel, so I uh, went ahead and got that fitted in. Still got to connect the wires, but uh, that's, that's looking pretty good. You know, from one piece of teak to the next piece, piece of teak plywood, it always looks a bit different. So, overall, I think it looks okay. So, the next thing i got to do is uh, pull out these little ports here, these fixed window ports, things here, and uh, rebed those. They had a little bit of a leak around those, so I'm going to rebed those. And... Uh, Maybe do just a little bit more cleaning on the inside. I've, I've got to hook up the electrical back to the panel. And uh, the inside is about done. Just... I hear working on this Compact 16. And I need to put new carpet or something on this uh, uh, cabin sole here. And this is the original uh, glass that was put over the concrete ballast. And they they didn't do a really good job. It's pretty sloppy, honestly. Of course, they covered it up with glue and carpet, and you didn't notice it. But with the carpet gone, you kind of do notice it. But there's a place, like right there, for example, where there's a, like a big bubble in it. Um, and I'm going to try to use that to my advantage. I'm going to cut that off and uh, where I can pour some uh, thin epoxy underneath this thing. It's it's in it's in pretty good shape. It's, it's tight to the concrete more or less, except for up here. And up here, you might may be able to see it when I push down on it. It flexes where it has separated from the concrete. And they're always kind of sloppy with the work up underneath these uh, uh, boards here. You know where they've got some foot. They got toe space here, and so it's you kind of can't even see up underneath there. You can't really get up in there to work. But anyway, um, what I'm going to try to do, and it may or may not work, I don't know, but I'm going to try it. Because it's, it's not bad enough to cut it up and, and redo it. It's just not. The concrete doesn't seem to be all crumbly underneath. It, at least it, I hope it's not. It doesn't seem to be. Uh, best I can tell, it's still laying flat. It's just that this has, has uh, lost its bond, I guess you could say, to the concrete, which is not unusual. Uh, polyester resin in particular doesn't stick very well to concrete and chances are this concrete was not cured very well whenever this was put on at the factory. So, you know, it, it, it served its purpose, but it's just not bonding to the concrete. And what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to cut off that little bubble right there that I wanted to flatten out anyway and uh, use that as a, a, a hole to pour resin, epoxy resin down in there. And I'm going to pre-drill a couple of holes, you know, one right in here and one further up in here with my hammer drill uh, for a couple of Tapcon screws. And I'm going to pour resin as much as I can kind of get down in there and then use those Tapcon screws and maybe a flat washer to, uh, to pull this um, floor or sole here down back, back against the concrete until that uh, epoxy sets up. And obviously there's no way I can really clean in there or wipe it down with acetone or anything like that. So it's gonna hold what it holds and then that's, that's all I can do. But I'm hoping that it will kind of rebond some of this uh, cabin saw here back to that concrete, at least a little bit and, and get rid of that flex that I'm seeing right here. But uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's really not bad enough to take it up. I'm tempted to just put carpet over it and call it good, but I'm going to try to improve it some, but I'm, I'm not planning on cutting it up. So I'm hoping this will be kind of a um, in-between measure that will maybe improve things without costing so much in time and materials. 
But um, like I say, I, personally, I could live with it like it is. I, you know, for me personally, I would just probably just put some carpet over it and forget about it. Um, but I've got somebody that's wanting this boat, so I'm going to try to improve it a bit. Okay, I got that bubble cut out where I can pour my epoxy in there. I've got two small holes drilled for a couple of Tapcon screws to, to kind of hold it down. And I also brought in a, a big heavy piece of a railroad track here that I'm going to use that to, to lay right here to hold as much of that down as I can to hopefully get it to rebond. And I'll have a piece of 1708 or something like that uh, pre-cut to lay across here. Once I pour all my epoxy in there, I'll lay that across there and then put some plastic or mylar or something over that so it won't stick to this and uh, and then lay this in place to to kind of hold it all down and just leave it leave it till tomorrow. And uh, with a little bit of luck, it'll uh, it'll help. And if it just flat out doesn't work, it's still not that bad. It's just not that bad. Okay, so I got, I think I put 20 pumps from a gallon size of, uh, you know, the West Marine epoxy and poured it down that hole that I cut. And then I patched the hole and put some mylar across it so that this chunk of metal here wouldn't stick to anything, hopefully. And uh, I put in uh, two Tapcon screws with washers to pull everything down pretty good and that actually worked okay um, and then I weighted it as well uh, with that heavy piece of uh, train track there just to make sure nothing popped back loose while it was curing so I've got a fan running in the background that's what the noise is it's another hot humid rainy day and my floor deal uh, where I put the tap cons in to pull that floor down and cut out that bubble that I had and you know, poured a bunch of uh, epoxy down in there, and then I patched that over with some uh, um, 1708 glass and weighted it down and everything. Uh, that worked out pretty good. The floor now doesn't uh, flex like it did, and it's uh, uh, a lot a lot flatter. It got rid of that little bit of a uh, kind of a hump in the middle there where it had popped loose from the concrete. So that worked out okay. Getting ready to glue in this carpet here. And I put a, got a full gallon of acetone there just for some weight and a cordless drill here. Just trying to hold that into the carpet from moving around while I, I'm going to fold this in back on top of this, back out of the way, and then glue up in here back about halfway and then put that carpet in. And then I'll lift this up, glue the back side, and then put this back in. That's what I'm going to try to do anyway. I had some gray. I think it's pretty good.